Okay, we're gonna clean all this marine tech. Okay, we're gonna talk about taping the recoil lug. I'm not here to teach gunsmithing. I'm not here to teach theory. Um, I'm here to show you a practical application of a normal bedding job. And what I do is I'll take the top of that lug, just like that, I'm gonna take the sides of the lug. You can use one or two layers of tape. It doesn't matter, it's up to you and up to your ability to remove it out of that stock. And then what I do, I just cut it off. So I got both sides. I'm gonna go right down the side the lug in the rear. Okay, there's your tape on. I got it on top. I got it on the sides. If you look, I don't go below the radius of the action too far because it may bind in the stock. Ready? Okay, on your barrel, on your stock channel, I'll start a split right on top of the barrel and I'll put a couple of rounds, you know, one, two, maybe three, something like that. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna help keep that barrel lined up in the center of that stock. Okay, y'all, um, when you bed, I don't want a pad, I don't want a pad of epoxy out in front of this. So I'm gonna pre-tape it. And I'm gonna make it where I can pull whatever, squeeze it out of the lug, where I don't have to grind it out of the stock. So we're gonna lay this down. And that way when the epoxy squeeze it out forward we'll be able to maybe grind it and fold it inward and break it so we're going to put the clay we're going to put this clay down in this hole just enough to keep the marine techs out of them it doesn't have to completely fill them up it doesn't have to be perfect because later on we're going to, if there's any misshapen marine techs we're going to cut it out so we got one two three holes done Bolts are going to go in these, so there's no need to do any of that. Hey, y'all, when I'm through, you know, I got my clay smeared around kind of haphazardly where I want it. Um, I always take brake cleaner. I'll be honest, I really like the 4800 Napa. It's about the driest I've ever used. And I'll put a little bit on a rag, and then I'm going to clean this action. I don't want any clay any debris, uh, any old glue. This stuff will even melt Marine Tex. So, or any other epoxy really. So if you got anything stuck, you can, um, you can rub it off and clean it. Then, then once I um, get everything clean like I want it and get the debris off of it, I'm gonna hit it with the air hose a little. And then we're gonna show you how to use some release agent. It's kind of old fashioned release agent but on these shiny actions where the finish is real smooth it's the way i do it and, it and it may help you okay y'all 30 years into business if you've got a smooth action real smooth cerakote you're not going to beat the johnson's paste wax it's harder to use it's more aggravating to use but your fit and finish and the fit of the action is going to be better so what we do we just apply it very liberally. You can see, it's just wadded up. And you want to get it in every crack and crevice. Bolt handle cuts, uh, bolt stop cuts, recoil lug, top bottom sides, front of the barrel, all the above. You want it, you want it on there very, very liberally. If, you're, if your marine text is gonna fall through the hole or through a port, let's say you had a, a feed window cut right here, you'd actually want to do what? Go inside and even use it inside because if it fell through, then it would be stuck inside that action. Now, I use a rag to get this off. I don't, a lot of people leave it on. I don't, it's too thick. And I want the best shooting gun I can get. So I'm gonna buff all this off and we're actually gonna do this same sequence twice. So we're gonna, after we buff it all off, we're gonna film it again and then I'm going to show you how to get it out of cracks and crevices that everybody hates. All right, this is our second coat of wax. We completely removed our first coat. And we're going to hit it again in case there's a spot we missed or something we didn't see. And um, after we get the second coat on, we're going to let it semi-dry. 
and then we're going to take it off. Right? Okay, if you remember in the beginning of the video, you see these striations of wax? You can see it in the old bedding. That's too thick. You want to take that off, and when you get through with this action, you pretty much want it to be where you think it's going to stick in the bedding because you can't see any wax. It's not going to stick though, but it's going to fit better. The gun's going to shoot better. Go ahead. All right, on your bolts and your hardware that you don't want stuck, just go on and wax it. Don't worry about the overburden. Don't worry about cleaning it up. So we're going to wax every bolt, every thread, and then we're also going to do our trigger guard trigger guard pieces anything that you don't want stuck in that stock permanently um, you're going to wax you're gonna okay y'all we use a lot of marine techs people say well Devcon uh, steel bed titanium beds better it is it's stronger but it shrinks more we don't want shrinkage. You can always repair bedding if it beats out, powders out, starts getting too loose. Um, at the end of this segment, we're going to talk about how tight this bedding fits, and I'm going to show you that if your gun's not bedded the way I'm showing you, maybe you should think about another way of bed. We use gray Marine Tex exclusively. I'd also like to mention that we've been working on an epoxy of our own branding to sell to gunsmiths. We're not quite there yet, but it's very promising, and I'll talk about that at a later date. When we mix this, I use a cutting board. Um, they're very cheap, and you can break it and bend it, and the epoxy will pop off of it. You can use it over and over and over. So, and I always over mix. I don't want to run out. I don't care how much waste I have. I don't want to be halfway through a bedding job and have to, you know, stop and and remix. That's, that's not what I want to do. It causes way too much anxiety. So we're going to put our base out on, on this piece. Once we get it out, then we're going to work with the hardener. Now a lot of people say Marine Tex is too hard to mix. It's five to one. I can't figure it. And, and you know, it might not work. I find it to be very forgiving. And I do a visual check of the blending ratios by eye. So as soon as I get this spoon cleaned off, then we'll go back to the hardener. Okay, we're in the hardener now, or what they would call the catalyst. Um, I'm gonna get out about what I think, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move around and go, that's one, two, three, four, five. Just like that. Now, I'm gonna take this extra, and I'm gonna put it right here on the side. It's just hardener. If I don't need it, I won't use it. So I'm gonna start mixing this, and what I do is immediately flip the epoxy upside down and get the hardener against the tray, and then I get the hardener that is, I mean, excuse me, the base that is not catalyzed off, you'll see me do it. So you see where that's sticking? I'm gonna flip this over here, and I'm gonna start that hardener just like that. Then I'm going to get all this up off of this. See why I'm getting this where it's stuck and not mixed up? And I'm going to get that over into the hardener. Because if you get a soft spot in your bedding, you're not going to be happy. And your customer is not going to be happy. So if you see, I got this floating on top of the that catalyst. I'm going to reach over here. I'm going to get every bit of this off that is not mixed up. Now I'm going to get this going. So I'm gonna work with it until it gets the feel that I like. And then if I decide I need some more hardener, okay, y'all, I didn't have to add any extra catalyst. Do you see this Marine Tex? Watch it. Watch what it does. See how it's starting to shine? Watch it, it'll lay down. See it's starting to lay down on its own? It's very nice. It's not stringy as water. It's got a good look. It's well catalyzed. If you, and if you gotta mix it, so knead it out, Make sure you push it all the way through. That way you don't have a, a, a hard spot or a soft spot or something that never cures. So I'm gonna leave that stick right there. We're gonna go right over here to the gun. 
Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it everywhere I think we need it and roll it up. Just roll it up, y'all. So I'm going to do my recoil lug hole first, and I'm going to actually push it into the stock. I'm not laying it on top of it. A lot of people get it. They lay it on there. If you watch, I'm going to push it into that stock. I want some adhesion. I don't want it to separate. Never put any more on your spatula than you can control. If you're in a situation that's a small little spot you need to do, make sure you put what you can control. Okay, you know a lot of people tape off the stock. They don't want it on the stock. Y'all, I don't care if it gets on the stock. I'm going to clean it off later. It's too easy to clean off. Q-tips and hoppies will clean off any of this stuff. It'll melt it while it's still in the in the wet state, okay? And your pillar holes, you're gonna wanna butter them. So when you get to your pillar hole in your stock, put your some in there and go round and around and butter it because it's gonna push on, push off. So you gotta put it on your pillar too. So make sure that you butter your holes in your stock where you don't have a void. Also hang some on the top edge of your stock. That way it doesn't capillary off or as you put the action in, pull it off the side and you get a void on your top edge. If it doesn't look like a disaster, before you get through, you're probably not gonna have a good bedding job. So, you know, I don't worry about what it looks like. I worry about the final result. And I promise you, I always use too much. I just don't want to avoid. I don't want to have problems. I want to have a really solid bedding job. I'll probably have it dripping on the floor and in my shoes and everywhere else before it's over. Okay, we got our stock done. It's thick enough now that we can hang the stock up. We can just take this stock. It doesn't even matter. We can stand it up right here, just like that. Now we're going to get our barrel to action. We're going to put it, watch out. We're going to put it right here. Just like this, we're going to get it good and level as we can. A lot of times I'll sandblast these pillars so that it'll adhere better. It, it's not really a necessity, but putting or buttering these pillars is a necessity. Like I said, when it comes through, it's going to push off. So you got to have push on in the same sentence. If you're pushing something off on entry, you got to have something to leave behind as it comes through. So when you butter these pillars, don't be scared. Just get with it. It'll take care of itself. Same thing on this one. It's got to be buttered. When you push it through the stock, it's going to wipe it off. What's in the stock is going to push through. You got to have it going in both directions where you don't have a void or air pocket or porosity. Okay, we're back again. We got the bedding cleaned up. We got good pillar contact. You can see the silver lines on every pillar. Action's cleaned up good. Um, we haven't painted the barrel channel yet or the trigger guard hole or the trigger bay, but I'm going to snap this together and show you how it should fit. Just like this, it's going to take a little bit to, to get it down on there correctly. There we go. Now I'm going to pick the stock up. There's no bed and screws in that. There's no trigger guard in it. If your gun doesn't fit like that, if your barreled action falls out of your barrel, you know, your stock, your bedding is incorrect. 